Hello everyone, welcome to the Geek Group. I'm Paul Kidwell. I'm Dan Eakin. Today we're here to talk about a musical Tesla coil. This here is the mini SSTC that uh, Steve Ward uh, made for the Geek Group some yep. time ago. And uh, we've modified it to add a Arduino processor on the base here. And we've set it up to play music. Yes, we did. We've done a half a dozen uh, Christmas carols yep. that uh, were featured in our uh, Christmas videos yep. last year. Um, those uh, pieces of music were done in four-part harmony, and it was all at a single tempo throughout. We've been ex expanding the capability of the software. The first thing we did was we uh, increased the number of notes that we could play at the same time. Now, for the Christmas carols, we were doing four-note chords, uh, pretty much consistently through them. Uh, we've developed the software quite a bit farther, and in the Takata and Fugue that we just played, there were six, eight, and ten note chords being played in that music. Um, the music that we play is stored on a micro SD card. You can see right there. And we can have multiple pieces of music programmed in and swap out which one we want to play. One of these is Christmas carols, one of these is Takata and Fugue, another is a couple other pieces that we've done. I think we did Axel F. Yep. And uh, the Turret Opera. Yep, we did yes. a portal song, yep. Yes. But the music is stored as a text file on the SD card. And Whatever's on there, it'll try and play. If it, it checks it as it's trying, and if it gets a, a misread, it'll throw that file out. So if there's like an executable or something on, like that on there, it'll skip it. But it will start with the first file on the uh, SD card and play all the way through. There's a two second delay, and then it'll go right on to the next file and try to play it as a song. The, as a text file, it takes up very little space, and these SD cards are, are two gigs, so you could put a couple thousand songs on Easily, these, yeah. probably. Um, we've done probably a dozen different pieces of music so far. Um, it's a little time consuming, because you're literally sitting there with sheet music and a list of notes, uh, the values for the notes. Um, it uses a MIDI chart, doesn't it? It uses a MIDI chart. The, oh. the note that you're going to play is the MIDI value of the note. Like, um, I don't even know, a, a middle C um, is a 60, as I recall, okay. for a MIDI number. So in the, the text file, each line specifies the duration of the note and um, the MIDI value of the note. So if you're going to play a four-note four chord, there'd be four values after the duration. Um, Takata and Fugue is a very complex piece of music, and it had a lot of things in it that made it very difficult to code. And I had to change the software multiple times to expand it to give it the capability to play. One of the big things was tempo changes. It changes tempo four or five times through its duration. Another thing is triplets. It's mostly triplets, which had to be, I had to come up with a way of coding the solution, them. Yeah. Exactly. And I remember the day you came in my office and you complained about a, a character on the sheet music that basically said, hold this note for as long as you feel. Oh, God, is, yes. Is I, don't even, I don't remember what it is. It's got some name in Italian, I think. I'm not sure. I don't want to know because that was horrifying. Everything else was very set mathematical, there's an answer, there's a solution, this is what you need to do and this is what you can do. Yeah, music is supposed to be mathematical, but yes. that was very organic. It was, a, it, was, it was a curve with a dot over the top of it. It basically meant hold the note till it sounds good. Computers are a little rough at figuring that part out, so I kind of had to wing it as I was programming it. Did you select a, a set duration or did you give it a random number? Or? No, I just played it, and said, nah, it needs to be a little longer, so I tweaked oh, the text file the and text played file. it again, yeah, sure. and said, it just it took the better part of a day to get it the way it sounded. Sure. But that's all been implemented. The playing a 10-note chord on a single coil, I don't think anybody has come anywhere close. I remember reading an article, a gentleman was playing two notes from the same coil, and he has an instructables about it. 
I've, okay, I've, I've seen somebody who used three separate processors and doing kind of a wired OR, but the three processors could walk over each other and he was having trouble where the music would get muddy as you added in more sure. and more co chords. Yeah. Um, I'm doing this all in software and eventually we're going to do a video that explains exactly how I did that. Until but, then, uh, can we release uh, information about how to write the text files? So oh, absolutely. Um, the, the, the writing the text files is very easy. There's, it's, you have one line right at the beginning that specifies the duration of a quarter note in, I think it's in milliseconds or something like okay. that. That basically sets the tempo for the music. Um, you can reissue that line anywhere in the, the file to change the tempo. Um, and aside from that, it's uh, duration in, um, let's see, duration followed by the notes that you're going to play. Uh, duration is specified as a number of 64th notes. So if you're going to play a half note, that would be 32 sure. 64ths. Uh, the only thing on top of that is uh, we set a flag. Um, basically, you add a thousand, I think. I'd have to take a look at the software to remember. But basically, you add a set number to specify it as a triplet. Oh, OK. So note. you just you just used a very large number to right, indicate Right, because you could have condition. a triplet made out of eighth notes, or you could have a triplet made out of 64th notes. I mean, it's not a set value. So I had to have a way of preserving the duration of a non-triplet note, and then say, OK, yeah, it says it's a 16th note, but it's really those three notes together are a triplet. So basically, you just set the flag on those three notes to specify a triplet. And Takata and Fugue is all triplets. Um, that was a bit of a nightmare figuring it out, because until then, I had no way of coding that, and I could not yeah. make it sound right. But um, we'll publish a document that shows how to take sheet music and convert it over to a text file that we can play. Ultimately, what we want to be able to do is have a Ethernet shield on an Arduino so you could browse to it and upload a file and have it play as the coil is setting in the uh, cafeteria. Here. Have a little webcam set up nearby. And, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's the Smiljan project that yep. we're still working on. This, this was done completely as a, an experiment to see if we could do it. Yep. And now we're building a much larger and more feature-packed solution to allow for folks from anywhere in the world to upload music yes. as they compose it in Notepad or WordPad. And they can log onto the website and view a webcam that, you know, they, they hit the play button and it plays the song mm -hmm. they just uploaded and they can see the coil play it for themselves. And the whole concept for Smiljan was basically to have a Tesla coil jukebox. Yep. Where we could have dozens or hundreds of songs just select from Pre-program in it you or you program. can upload your own or... Mm -hmm. Yep. So I think that's it for today on this. This gives a good overview of what's going on here. As I said, this is one of Steve Ward's very original designs. Um, to show how old it is, he's got a, um, what is it, a 7414 buffer in there, and he's got all six of them wired in series, which I know one of his more recent uh, schematics, he dropped four of them out, so there's just two in series. Yep. So this is fairly old, and we've retrofitted it with some fairly new technology here to give it capability far beyond what it was before. Yep. So, well, that's it for today. I'm Paul Kidwell. I'm Dan Eakin. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and donate. And we'll catch you later. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.